Yup. I wasn't going to say nothing. But you don't push me to the limit. Well, I have to tell you something. So I'm going to let you know how I'm going to respond to my enemies, to my fake friends, to every naysayer who wishes bad on me, wishes me to fall, wants to see some imperfection, or those who just get mad because they see they see growth. Someone who doesn't want to see me grow, or someone who doesn't even want to see me happy. Those who feel unincluded, though all that, this is your category. You ask for this. I got to give it to you. And everyone out there, when you have enemies, haters, and these people in that category, this is the message to them as well. So share this to our haters and our naysayers. First off, I want to start by saying I love you. And I speak peace upon your heart and your mind. And whatever you wish on me that's evil, I wish the opposite for you. I don't want to see you fall. I want to see you stand. Like, I don't want to see you hurting. I want to see you happy. And whatever's keeping you from growing, if whatever's keeping you from not being a part of what God has in, every, in, in his kingdom, them, then I pray that God removes that hindrance from your life. Whatever it is in your mind that's keeping you from not wanting to be in unity or to walk, wake up full of love and support and share and just be happy when you see other people happy, I pray that God heals your heart because I know it's something inside of you. That, and I get it, man. I've been there too. So I, I don't look down on you or nothing like that. I, any way that I can help you, I, I don't want to fight fire with fire. I want to I overcome evil with good. So check it out. I told, I pray so much for those who, for those who cause annoyance or those who sometimes want, provoke anger out of me, cuss me out, whatever. Like I, I, I'm like, Lord, how do I respond to that? And God says, How did I respond to you when you pushed me, Brian? When you didn't want nothing to do with me, and I said, You love me, Lord. You, you always showed me you love me. And He said, That's the same way that I want you to deal with your enemies. That's the same way that I want you to deal with these people who, 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 uh, for some reason, are angry with you. For some reason, don't want to see you uh, stand. Like they're, they're looking, they're, they're smiling, but they're grinning. Like how do I want you to love them? Even when, even when you got a knife on your back, I want you to hug them, Brian. I want you to show, show them how I loved you. So here it goes. This is good. Look, the enemies of God, enemies of Brian, enemies of, of the kingdom of Christ, enemies of you out there. This, this is this. We should always remember that at one time we were enemies of God. I was an enemy of God, Romans 5.10. But God shows his love for us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5.8 says, now we have been justified by his blood. Much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. That's Romans 5.9 for the children of God is is. It is written that no ill befalls the righteous, but the wicked are filled with trouble. Proverbs 12, 21 says, for those who have repented and trusted in Christ, the Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. Psalm 121, 7, we might have enemies, but think about their fate in the day where Christ ju judges us, right? The, in the world in righteousness. In Re Revelations 20, 12 through 15, look, I don't wish that on nobody. I wouldn't want to wish that day of judgment on nobody. I don't care how much you hate me. I don't... I, that's the most horrible day for somebody to stand before God and it's not right. When people treat you badly because you're a believer, understand that we were once like that. And now at one time we were in darkness, but now we're in the light and the Lord. So we should walk as children of light. Ephesians 5, 8. Every one of us has enemies, don't we? You have enemies. I have enemies. It says maybe you don't even know but know it, but if you are if you share the gospel and live a life of holiness, you're gonna gain more enemies. It happens like that. But the wisdom of Solomon says in Proverbs that when a, a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies be at peace with him. Proverbs 16 to uh, 16 7. So at least part of our effort to make our enemies our friends is to live a life that pleases God. There it goes. You want your enemies to be your friends, you're leaving the gang life. So maybe some of you have people that want to kill you, and you're like, How can I live for Christ? I I, I gotta I gotta carry your gun these people are out to get me but look the bible says when the way you live pleases the lord he will even make your enemies at peace with you apostle peter asked who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good if if you are if you are enthused and excited about, about the things the good things of god in first peter three thirteen, he said who's gonna harm you the bible teaches us that we are to forgive one another because we've been forgiven so much matthew 6 14 through 15 first john 1 9 says so why not try to talk to them in, in person in private send a message ask them hey what have i done to offend you forgive me if i offended you try to make things uh, make amends if you can 
Sometimes you can't. Some people don't want your forgiveness. Sometimes people, that they rather be mad. They rather hate you. They rather push you away. And, and, and I know that sucks, right? It's a bummer because all you want to do is say, what did I do wrong to you? And if I did something wrong, forgive me. Like, I, I don't want to be a person. I don't, wanna, I don't want you to have hate in your heart towards me. Forgive me. Where, where did I offend you? And sometimes people say, I just don't like you. I just don't like you. I don't like, your, I don't like nothing about you. I don't like what you stand for. And, you know, people are going to be like that. But it's your job to try to make amends. And I know for those who don't have spiritual eyes, you're saying, man, that's weak. That sucks. I'm not going to do it. But yes, it honors God when you does it. Because remember, on the day of judgment, you're going to ask for forgiveness. I'm going to be asking for forgiveness before we go. And if we don't forgive those who are on earth, if we don't try to reach out and make amends, God's not going to forgive you, man. If you hate me and, and, and I'm telling you, hey, what did I do to offend you? To forgive me. And you don't forgive me. You got to deal with, the, with God. That's just the truth. Like, you're blocking your own blessings. You have to wake up with the yuck in your heart. You can lie to yourself and say, I'm good, man. My family good. We good. Like, and inside, you're dealing with the most yucky, yuck thing, unforgiveness, resentment, bitterness. And every time you see some th something or somebody that you hate, whenever time you see him smile, you see a picture of the family, you 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 cuss inside or or you're really you're, re you're ready to call slander. Maybe you left the ministry. Maybe you left the church or maybe you left something and, and you feel like you left, the, like these people don't care about you and you feel offended. But and all of a sudden now you're blaming people or, or you're preaching messages from a from a, a, an agenda from the heart like it's the wrong type of motive you know what I mean like you're trying to say the right things but there's a wrong thing behind it you're not trying to help nobody you're trying to humiliate and maybe you're out there trying to find people to think like you people like I, mean, I just get people to think like me. People who have been hurt, and yeah, you've been hurt, I've been hurt, man, see, man, only God can judge us, right, yeah, drink a beer, yeah, smoke a joint, yeah, okay. nobody can judge us, man, now you get around people who are miserable, just like, and you're miserable at times, you're hurt at times, and they're hurt, and nobody knows the solution, so all you do is hang around hurt people, and guess what, hurt people, wounded people only wound people, they only wound, they, if they can't be healed, how are you going to heal somebody? How are you gonna? How are you truly gonna heal until you are left? I'm telling you, the greatest joy in this life, I mean, this is for all 536 of you online. The greatest joy in this world is to get that burden of unforgiveness off your heart. When I forgave the murders of my twin, bruh, sis. The, uh, hey, I don't know, you out there, bro, church brother, ministry brother who left the ministry out of order and, and you just like, I want to do what I want to do. And all of a sudden you have unforgiveness towards this ministry or, or another church. Look, when I forgave the murders of my brother, I was set free, bro. It was the hardest thing to do. So you can't tell me it's something that I haven't done. I practice it daily and it set me free and it lifted up a burden off my thing. And that's why when, when you throw stones at me, that's why when people throw slander at me, when people are, are, are putting talking out the side of their neck on Facebook with their Facebook feelings, man, I can forgive you, man, because I fought bigger giants than you. I fought greater giants than you. These little things in front of me. They don't mean nothing because I, I, I refuse to live with yuck in my heart. You should refuse to live with yuck in your heart. You should want to be blessed. You should want your children to be blessed. And the only way you're going to have a blessed house and a blessed life if you teach and you practice forgiveness, man. It says don't respond the same way that they do when they talk to you. If they want to cuss at you, don't cuss back. You can't fight fire with fire. You can't fight gossip with gossip. You can't fight fist with fist. You're going to have to learn to overcome evil with good. Try to speak in a quiet and a calm voice when you talk to these people. A gentle voice would turn away wrath. Some of these people are just waiting for you to speak the wrong way so they can pull and provoke and say, aha, I told you brother Brian ain't saved. Look, he's trying to throw punches at me. I'm already keen to the devil's schemes. I know that man can provoke me. I'm a human, man. I could get angry. You say the wrong thing, I may, I can get angry inside, but I'm not going to let you take me out of my character. I'm not going to let you take me out of character with a Facebook post or a gossip or whatever you're doing. Like, I'm, That's not going to do that. I'm going to overcome evil with good. I'm going to speak life, peace, love, joy, and forgiveness upon you. I'm going to wish the best for you from the from the inside of my soul because I know that's what the enemy wants is for me to hate another person. The enemy wants you is to hate somebody, to slander somebody. Don't don't fall trickery to the enemy's schemes, man. Overcome evil with good. Pray for your enemies. I know one of the hardest things for a Christian to do, praying for those who hate you and despise you, praying for those who wish bad for you, praying for those who always gossip, praying for those who talk behind your back, praying for those who plant seeds of discord and when you're not around another. You have to pray for them. It might be hard, but it's the best thing to do. It says love Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be the sons of your father who is in heaven. That would honor our father. That's why we're saved. We're going to have to fight the way Jesus says to fight. And it's not with fists. It's, it's the weapons of righteousness with love and forgiveness. Listen, 
It says, it sounds easy, right? But it isn't. I know, we know that, right? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. If you love those who only love you, what is the same? What, what reward do you get from that? If you're the type of person who says, man, I only care about those who care for me. Hey, if they don't include me, if they don't share my flyer, if they don't take me on a tour, if they don't put me on the songs, if they don't come to my church function, if they don't support my marriage, if they don't do all these things, then I ain't going to do it for them. I'm not going to love them. But you know what? He says even the sinners do that. So what good? This love that you have, it's, a, it's only a human love. The only way that the world knows that you belong to Jesus is when you love one another the way Jesus loves one another. It has to be supernatural. It has to go beyond measure. You can't just say, I love those who love me. Everyone could do that. Anyone could do that. It says the world knows that we belong to Jesus by the way we love one another. I, man, trust me. I have people that I got to keep forgiving over and over and over. And it's okay. I keep loving them. And I know in your heart. You know who you are out there. People that I've dealt with, people that you've dealt with, they know in their heart. They know. They know that, that you could have hated them. You could have. You didn't have to have mercy, and you did, and I did, and they did, right? When I'm talking to people in general that did this to everybody. You've done it to somebody. They walked away thinking, man, he didn't have to do that, and he did. Inside their heart, they know this dude truly loves God. This dude truly loves Jesus. She truly loves Jesus. She forgave these people. He forgave these people. Brian forgave these people. In your heart, you when you sleep at night, you got to understand that somebody had mercy. Someone gave you forgiveness and grace that God gave them and they gave it to you. And you know in your heart, he truly belongs to God. I, I at least want the enemy to know that. I at least want my haters to know that. And this man truly loves God. Every time I cuss at him, he forgives me. Every time I, I push him, he, he turns around and tries to hug me. Every time, but you know, when I'm hungry, this dude don't even have to come feed me or this dude don't have to come and help. And he always trying to help me. I know he belongs to God. At the end of the day, they know, trust me. It says in Matthew 5, 6, 4, 6, it says, we are not different from the world if we only love our own and not our enemies. Listen, we are not no different if we just love our own and not our enemies. We should pray for our enemies, but also love them. It should not matter if they re revile you, cuss you, persecute you, and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. He says, because your reward is great in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Matthew 15, 5, 11 through 12. Since we know that we're to love our enemies and pray for them, Jesus takes it even further by saying to you who hear, love your enemies enemies do good to those do good to those who hate you Luke 6 27 and bless those who curse you not curse those who curse you bless those who curse you I wish the best for you pray for those who abuse you Luke 6 28 this means no matter how they treat you mom no matter how they treat you bro no matter how they treat you sis no matter how they treat you my friend my brother my tío my, my grandma everyone out there spiritual people no matter how they treat you you have to love them listen love your enemies and do good to them land expecting nothing in return and your reward will be great and you will be sons of the most high for he is kind to the ungrateful and the evil god reigns on the just and the unjust luke 6 35 says and be merciful just as even your father Father is merciful. Luke 6, 36, the Apostle Paul seems to quote Jesus as he writes, bless those who persecute you and bless and do not curse them. Romans 12, 14, and make sure to repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to what is honorable in the sight of all. Do it says as much as possible. So as far as it depends on you, live peaceably in peace with everybody. Paul's point is never avenge yourself, but leave it to the wrath of God for it is written. Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Romans 12, 19, but to the the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him water. Give him something to drink, for by doing so, you will heap burning coals on his head. Romans 12, 20 says, when we treat those who hate us, who persecute us, who despise us and verbally abuse us, we must love them, pray for them, do good to them. Do they deserve it? No, but neither, neither did we, neither did Brian deserve God's grace, but he gave it to us anyway. Talk about confusing your enemies, right? Talk about making it feel weird for them. I hate this dude. I hate this woman. I hate this person. And they keep loving me. Now all of a sudden they're like, I don't understand this type of love. Just love them and treat them with respect and dignity. Even if they don't deserve, uh, uh, even if they don't treat us this way. Think about how those who hate us and treat us badly will face God's judgment. Someday they'll have to deal with your daddy. Someday my hate is going to have to deal with God. Someday my hate is going to have to deal with the one who loves me. Hey, touch not God's anointed. You can curse yourself by speaking blessings and trying to cause harm on somebody who never did you nothing wrong remember that 
Be careful what you speak on people's lives. Talk about confusing your enemies, man. Be merciful to those who doubt. Save others by snatching them from the fire to others. Show mercy mixed with fear. Hating even the clothing stained by corrupted flesh. Jude 1, 22-23. We must understand that it's normal for the world to hate us. It's normal for the world to hate us. Why? Because we don't belong to the world. Since in the last times there will be scoffers. Those who follow their ungodly desires. It says, remember that we are no better than they are at that at one time. We were the same way. I was the same way. Listen, such as some of you, but now you are washed, you're sanctified, you're justified in the name and the Lord of Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. That's 1 Corinthians 6 11. Listen, I don't know who you are out there, but you're dealing with enemies. I have them. Some of them are probably watching right now. This is my message to you right now. I. I wish the best for you. I speak peace upon you, brother. I speak peace upon your wife, your marriage, your children. I speak peace upon my those who want to see the ministry fall. I speak peace upon those I've offended in some way. Forgive me. I'm still learning as a brother in Christ. I don't want to see nothing bad happen to nobody. I used to fight with hollow, with hollow tips. Now I fight with hallelujahs and love and obedience and forgiveness. I don't come to hurt nobody. I don't want no yuck in my heart. At the end of the day, I will overcome evil with good. I will overcome the wickedness with righteousness. And that's Jesus' way of fighting that's why I honor God. I forgive those. Forgive me if I offended you. This is my message to my haters. If anything should ever happen to Brother Brian, God forbid, and I have to go to heaven, and, and, and somebody just says, man, I hate that dude. Put this video, play this video back so I can tell them, man, look, I love you, man. I wish the best for you, man. I wish the best for your family. I, 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 I hope God blesses you with the greatest things on earth, good memories. I, I pray that your household is filled with salvation and rest restoration and forgiveness. I wish nothing bad on you guys. I want to see you climb to, to the highest heights with Jesus Christ, man. And, and and I know that at the end of the day, the enemy's mad because he wants me to cuss, fight, make diss songs and all that. But I'm not. I'm going to pray. I'm going to do good. I'm going to treat people with integrity. And that's my message to those who want evil on me. That's my message to those who want evil on the kingdom of Christ. Love and forgiveness in the name of Jesus Christ. And I say that with, 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 with everything inside of me. I wish the best for each of you. Each of you. My desire is to see each of you blessed, man. So, so have an awesome day. Just let God fill your heart with peace. Don't let, uh, don't let unforgiveness, resentment, or bitterness block your blessings, destroy you in no way, man. Be blessed out there. Every single one of y'all, man. Tell, tell your enemy, man, you love them. Wish the best for your enemies, man. Don't let, the en don't let the enemy make you become an enemy. Make your enemies become your friends with the love of Jesus. Amen? Salute. Huh.